When we do our push-ups every day, we remember why we're here on Earth, and that is to eat bananas for that vitamin B. Baby dolls, crypto, unfortunately, has hurt more people than it's helped. Dun, 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 dramatic music. Yes, it has, but it solved a lot of world's problems. But unfortunately, it's just the way it goes. That's because of the mechanics of assets and speculation. Yes, a lot of people get very upset when I say this. It's the truth. I don't really care. I don't care. You're going to get the truth from me. It has hurt more people than it's helped. You know, when I said this, one of my friends, Mr. Woofy, Mr. Woofy said, no, Mr. Somi, it's not crypto that's hurt people. It's people that hurt people. I stood there and I froze and I thought, oh my gosh, if this was a movie, this would be the climax part of the story. That's a lot of BS. It's like telling me, guns don't hurt people, it's the people. Come on, man. Listen here. There are 419 million total holders out there in crypto. Probably the first 10, 20, 30, 40 million have won. The bottom 350-ish million wrecked because of the way the pyramid goes. You need exponentially more people to come in to get exponentially more prices. However, there's a caveat here. The caveat, it's actually it's quite interesting. This is a Bitcoin chart, all right? The caveat is that the marginal buyers push Bitcoin back up and bring it back up to new heights. That's the only way most of us have won. And then you have to start splitting the atom a bit. You're like, oh, did you beat inflation? Did you beat the stock market? Let's not worry about them. One challenge at a time. And to keep us going, let's pump some music. We're cranking it. You see this? You're probably confused. You're like, how the hell is this dude who I like subscribe, press the belly button on all to? How is this person who is in crypto 18 hours a day, probably like literally all 24, dreaming about it all day? How is he telling me that crypto has hurt more people than it's helped? And why is he still here? I'm going to tell you right now. We're going to onboard the next 1 billion people. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. You know what's interesting? You might be saying, well, effectively what you're saying is the Ponzi ain't over yet. That's right. That's what we're here for. They're going to keep printing currency. The applications are going to get better. We're going to get that boomer money in. That's what we're here for. You ever wonder why value accrues? Value, friends. What's value? Value, strong fundamentals. Why does the chart go up? Why did Bitcoin's chart go up? I know, yes, more buyers and sellers. Ha ha, nice joke. Why did it go up? It went up because someone, some peeps came in with a long-term view. They came in and they bought the supply off the market. When they bought the supply off the market, they said, I am wiping my hands clean. I am locking this up. You won't be able to access this Bitcoin for a long time. See you later. And then we're going to get the little dove emoji. All right. That's exactly what we're going to do. There's a cute little dove emoji here. We're going to fly. That's why we actually go up in any asset, stonks, commodities, anything. That's what we need in crypto, by the way. We need long-term mindset people to come in. <coughs> and we will get that. Now, another thing to continue on telling you is that not only do we need long-term mindset people, we got to remember markets move just off the marginal price of whatever it is you're, you're valuing. So what does that mean? It means we can have, like in a little house here, friends, there could be a million of us and we already own, say, let's just use Bitcoin as an example, but the final 5% of people if they want to sell Bitcoin down to 10K, well, guess what? The marginal price of Bitcoin, it's now 10K for everyone. You see what I mean? But all these people who bought, we don't value it at 10K, but that's what happens with markets and cycles. But also it happens the other way too. So when the prices go down, for example, when the prices go down in Bitcoin, you don't actually need a lot of money to come in and set the price much higher. You just need enough for the liquidity pool to replenish itself. And one more caveat. As it goes up, you need the existing people to still believe. If they don't believe, what do they do? They sell. 
and you never ever recover the high. And that's how you have the doom loop of all the altcoins out there. You've seen a lot of the altcoins. For example, here's EOS. The doom loop, EOS goes down, hits the fib, goes down. Maybe in the next bull market, oh, by the way, maybe EOS only hits back to like $9 this time, where it just goes wee and then just dies, even if you can ever get there, by the way. So that's the doom loop. It can never ever recover. It's just constant net exits of people. So I know it appears like it's just a Ponzi, but we need crypto to advance and to add value in such a way that the va the the technology and all the applications we make, they incentivize people enough to believe in a long-term vision for something more than just, for example, number go up. We need people to actually want to use stuff long-term. And there's nothing to fear. We will get it. We will. We're using the internet today. No one could have imagined back in the end of the 90s that we'll be talking through the power of the internet, making videos, singing songs, chatting, sending money across the internet. It's all been one big progression. And friends, I want to add, look here, look here. Another coin where the team and founders started dumping its rally. Orbs. <clears throat> Very unfortunate. This is what happens, you see. This is why crypto, it hurts more people than it helps. You got to stick to the long-term stuff. And yes, I'm not even like sugarcoating it. it it's, it's tough. It's tough to know that everyone comes in at the top. How many times have I told you on the charts? I've, I've shown you so many times. <clears throat> let's say, let's say this, this, this cycle for Bitcoin. Probably the first, if you, you draw it out here, <clears throat> out of like, let's say there's 10 people, friends, or like, you know, 10 people. The first 10% are in here. The next 30% are in here. They come along the whole way and literally 60% are buying the top. <clears throat> That's right. Isn't that really rough to know that? That's why you got to buy in the depression. You really got to buy in the depression. The people who buy in the depression <clears throat> get half of the money from the guys in the middle and the girls and the squirrels and the ducks and the, the pups. <clears throat> and then you get 60% and the final big bang. That's all the free money at the end. Well, I'd like to, I say free money, but it's actually very dangerous. It's just, it's when things start going <clears throat> parabolic. You get the final two or three X. But remember, it's a two to three X to them. But what do they know is <clears throat> you're up a 10 X. So they're giving you a double or a triple, but like they're giving us, sorry, a 20 or a 30 X. But for them, it looks like only a double or a triple. They never know everybody else's point of reference or their starting point. That's why very important we focus on pieces of information like this. The crypto industry is just full of these junk. I also add, it doesn't matter if the entity is centralized or decentralized. There's always weak hands who are kneecapping a rally. There are people from previous cycles. There are founders. There are insiders. It's just scum friends. There's a lot of scum everywhere. I'm here to help you. That's why I make my videos here for you, to educate you. <clears throat> I'm going to walk you through this cycle with me. We're going to try to identify, is there euphoria? Do people have their pants off? Is there glitter in the pool? We're going to get in trouble for that. We need to pay for a cleaner before the owner gets home. Crypto rewards paper hands more times than holders. That's true. Isn't it true? <clears throat> it's very sad, but it's the truth. 99% of coins go down. So it doesn't matter whether they have a good price to earnings valuation or adoption or they use as a currency. You know, that's all junk. All that matters is Metcalf's law, the amount of people coming in. And if people come in for a bull market and they leave in the bear market because prices go down, well, it doesn't really matter what your coin does, does it? It just matters that it grabs people's attention. That's just how it goes. <clears throat> if only there was a nice formula. Unfortunately, there isn't. A lot of people try to do PE valuations and ratios. Yeah, I'd love, they, I'd love for them to work <clears throat> because we just go to one website. You just go to crypto fees. That's it. Cryptofees.info. There you go. Buy every single coin here. See you later. Go home. Go home, friends. ETH, Uni, BTC, Aave, <clears throat> Maker, GMX, Curve. That's it. Just buy all these. They're making the highest fees. Is this the way to invest? I'm not a financial advisor. Go speak to one. Go buy bonds and see how that works out for the next 10 years. I can only tell you what I'm doing. <clears throat> and I can already tell you, friends, right? From the bottom of my squirrel's nuts, I already had a portfolio allocation in the previous bull market to positive PE ratio things. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter, Habib.
This is my results. You want to know what mattered? Pikachu. It had the name Pikachu in it. It had a Pikachu logo. That's what mattered. Kishu Inu was a dog coin. That's what mattered. What is your coin to? It doesn't matter. It's got a picture of a dog on it. E-Gold. Trash name. I don't even know how I made 54X in it. You see? Now, I hope the game doesn't require this type of peanut brain approach in the future. But it's looking like it will. And the gains will be less. I'll tell you that much. So you've got to be careful with all these coins. Please, baby dolls, keep your back straight and your fluffy slippers on. I'm telling you now, every single coin and the founder says, utility, we're revitalizing DeFi, we're reinventing the wheel. It's all a load of baloney. Actions speak louder than words. The orbs team appears to be selling orbs after orbs rose. Why are you selling your coin before a Bitcoin halvening year? Like... How bearish are you on your own stuff? You know what I mean? And this is it, by the way. This is orbs. Congratulations. This is it. it goes up, down. <clears throat> look at this. Look at this, by the way. From the peak, you are still down. You are down 85%. Look at that. It just zips up. They just start immediately selling. Oh, man. It's just screw this industry sometimes, man. And, of course, it's, a, it's, a, it's an absolute dog poop diarrhea explanation of what the coin does. Orbs was built to bridge the unoccupied gap between the functionality of a pubic hair blockchain with the ironclad security of a private one. Are you serious, man? Who cares? No one cares, bro. No one cares. Privacy, this, that. We don't care. That's why they dump. They know we don't care. So <clears throat> please be aware of this. This is going to come across your face January, February. We're going to make it through 2024, but you're going to be put... And shown, people are going to be literally unzipping their pants and flopping their willy out and telling you to buy their altcoins. They're flopping out their altcoins all over your face. Be careful. Or you can learn the hard way, friends. I know you like it hard sometimes out there. Mr. Crypto Phil says, let them get out at the macro lows. They will be extra fuel on the way up later. Yes, it's true. Don't forget, please. Please, please, please. I wish I had someone like me making videos in 2020 to tell me, hello, my friend, every single team, every founder, every community, it's all a load of BS. Do you understand? They're all going to dump. They're going to dump on that way up. And in fact, whenever they dress up more utility and all those words, go check the chain. They're probably dumping along the way. Just remember, even Ripple did this for the past 10 years. Think about it. If, you, if Ripple really believed they were going to be the world CBDC, would they have been dumping the world currency for the past 10 years? Doesn't take a genius to figure it out, friends. But they buy a lot of sports cars and mansions and offices. You know, it's a tough game, man. It's a tough game. That's why, fingers crossed, you and I, we're going to make it. Make sure you like, subscribe, belly button, all. I will catch you in the next one. Till mum and dad, we do love and appreciate them.